Jared is with us in Minneapolis, so we'll be up there next week to see you guys. Hey, Jared, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Hey, I got a question about a. I got a small business. Um, I got two trucks, and um, it seems like every time I get caught up, um, I got another big bill that I can't cover. So then I put it on a credit card, and I just kind of feel like I'm stuck in a loop. Okay. Um, what kind of business are you in? It's a towing company. Say again? I'm um, salvage cars. To towing? Towing. Okay, so you have two tow trucks. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you just, um, like most people, maybe even like me, got up uh, and just decided I'm in business today. Um, well, I've been working in the business for like 12 years. Working years in it is different myself. than running it. Yep. And so now you now tow operating a tow truck is no longer your job. Your job now is running a business, and you're really good at operating a tow truck, and now you're having to learn how to run a business. Is that fair? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of big bills are coming up? Unexpectedly. Um, well, I got a – I got a – it's a higher mileage truck, so I just had a turbo come – go out on me it's about 8900 with the intercooler uh -huh. and i'm hoping to put about two grand down but i don't have enough to cover the rest of the bill uh -huh. okay who's driving the other truck um it's just me they got um you have two, you have two have trucks you have two trucks and you just shoot yep. yes park it till you make the money with the okay. other truck Okay. What's the other bills that have come up it? unexpectedly? Um, it, it's just bigger repairs. They just seem like you got like six or eight a year. It seems like. Okay. You know, I, I would think that that's not really. Them. I would think that that's not really unexpected. That's predictable. Okay. I think you're going to have X number of thousands of dollars average per month. Some months none. Some months double of repairs because you've got a fleet of trucks, two trucks on the road, and. Um, Towing stuff's hard on trucks. Okay. So you're going to have repairs as part of your business. Of is, part of your business model. Okay. I guess what I'm afraid of is if a motor goes, you know, it's like thirty grand to get it rebuilt. Do mm -hmm. I get rid of the truck or do I just just expect it to be coming up and save up for it? Exactly. I don't think it's if a motor goes. I think it's when it goes. Yep. It's going to go. It's part of your business. You're going to wear out these vehicles. You're going to have small repairs, medium repairs, and huge repairs and replacements. These are part of your business model. And setting money aside to keep all of that running, like paying the rent for a restaurant or paying a worker that okay. works there, you've got to set it aside out of your – you've been just making the money and taking it all home and maybe paying your taxes. Yeah, well, I pay myself out of it, too. I pay myself about forty grand a year. That's what I mean. You're taking all the money home. There's no money laying down at the yeah. office. Yes. So you're just making the money and taking it home. You're treating it like you have no expenses hardly other than fuel and insurance. You're paying some of that. But, um, yeah, so uh, my guess is you're probably not charging enough. Okay. They're, they are set rates for the most part, which is kind of sucks too. But set rates by who? Um, they're mostly insurance cars. Oh, okay. So um, the insurance the company totals out, I go get insurance it. Company's setting the rate. Yes. Sometimes you bid on them, but for the most part, they're set. Okay. All right. I'd be looking at my business model because fuel's gone up, repairs have gone up, everything's gone up, and if the insurance rate set rate didn't go up, that might not be the business I want to be in. I may want to be in a uh, non-insurance towing business or something. I don't know, but you got to be looking at all of that all the time. Bottom line is, though, you need to be running a profit and loss statement. I'd have you sit down, go to RamseySolutions.com, click on Tax ELP, and find someone that's in the bookkeeping and accounting business in your area that we recommend. Have them start to help you build an accounting system. It's really not rocket science. It sounds intimidating, but it's not. It's what you've got coming in, minus money set aside for repairs, minus money set aside for fuel, minus money set aside for um, uh, insurance, um, and help you look at the pricing and seeing, you know, can I afford to do this? You might be losing money on every tow if, if uh, repair costs and insurance costs and fuel costs have gone up so much that by the time you go over there, you're losing money every time. 
that could happen in, in the yeah. world we live in today with this inflationary market and this fuel and diesel's gone nuts too. So And factoring in the repairs. Like if you do all yeah. of that and do when your you budget for the month the, to see. Yeah, the actual repairs because um, you don't want to live behind the eight ball, which is where you are. You're always behind. You're, you're always waiting on the next thing to happen instead of planning for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Jared, in the real estate business, uh, back in the day when I was a, a young guy, uh, they taught us, if you own an apartment complex, to say, okay, uh, the, the roof has five years of life left on it before it starts leaking. And so I need to figure out what a roof costs, and I need to put one-fifth of the roof cost away for the next five years to replace the roof, plan to replace the roof. And we called those a sinking fund. Uh, that's what it's called in that world. But in, in your sense, you need a sinking fund to replace trucks and to do big repairs to trucks, and you need a budget line item for minor repairs to trucks and for a budget line item for fuel and a budget line item for these things. And you need to put all this stuff together, and then that helps you calculate what each trip costs and whether or not it makes sense to do some of these trips. And, um, and it helps you save up and fix this one turbo right here as fast as you can, because you're going to put a big old line item in there and, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to work extra. You're going to do everything you can to get extra money coming in to cover this right now. But no, I'm not going to tell you to go into debt to do that. I, I'm going to park that truck and run the other truck until I can do it. It's what I would do if I owned the business. And, uh, it's how I've run this business too. I started it on a card table in my living room and we've never borrowed a dime all the way out. Hang on, I'm going to send you a copy of our book, Entree Leadership, which will help you run your business. It's what we teach, how we teach small business people to run their business. You're doing a good job. You're doing better than you think you're doing, but you've got to get around in front of this because this is causing a ton of stress for mm -hmm. you that, is, that doesn't have to be there. Doesn't have to be there. But um, So, folks, what happens is, what happened with Jared and what I was accusing him of, uh, not in a derogatory way, but just reading his mail, is a, a lot of people become good at a trade. I'm a good plumber. I'm a good heating and air guy. I'm a good carpenter. I'm good at cooking. Uh, I'm good at being a chef. I'm good at whatever. And then they open a business. I'm, I'm a good real estate agent. And then they open a business. I'm going to own a real estate company with agents working for me. I'm going to open a heating and air company with heating and air techs working for me, and I'm going to have trucks. I'm going to open a towing company. And you become an accidental leader, an accidental entrepreneur. But what we always, the mistake all of us make, and I, I've made the mistake too, even inside of the Ramsey business I've made the mistake. Um, just because someone's good at a certain discipline or a certain thing, that does not necessarily mean they're good at leading a business to do that thing. Business leadership and business entrepreneurship is a different skill set than working on heat and air or than working or than doing computer programming or than whatever. So if I've got a computer programmer that's an excellent computer programmer, it doesn't necessarily mean it, they may be the best in the building, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're a leader yeah. of that area because leadership is a different skill set than computer programming. And, and so anytime you're in the small business setting, one of the moves you make is from practitioner to owner. You move from your hands doing the work to also your brain has to be controlling the numbers around your hands doing the work and the people that use their hands doing the work. And so you got to get up on top of it. And uh, my friend Michael Gerber, who wrote the book E-Myth, which is a wonderful book on this subject, says to work on your business, not just in mm -hmm. your business. Yeah, uh, that's his phrase, and it is an absolutely fabulous phrase. And uh, it's a good way to look at this stuff. Entree Leadership will help you with all of that.